Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life and in this video I'm going to teach you how to properly size fuses to protect the wires in your DIY camper electrical setup. Now in my last video I talked about how to size a wire which I think is a pretty important prerequisite to watching this video as I talked about the maximum amperage a wire can handle. Also, the wire size calculator that I showed, it also includes a few size recommendations. So if you haven't watched that one yet, I think it'd be a good idea to do so. Now, before we get rolling, it's also worth noting that I've got nearly 20 different wiring diagrams available to you for free that already include wire size and fuse sizes in it. So if you'd rather not do this part yourself, you can check out those done for you options right up here. Now in this video, I'm going to jump headfirst into a bit of code requirements, calculations and such, but if you stick around to the end of the video, I've made something for you that should make this process much easier. Now, last little bit of prerequisite info before we get started. The numbers and figures I will be talking about are based on wire that has 105 degrees Celsius temperature rating. And if you need some help sourcing where to purchase this type of wire, I've made an Amazon store where I've handpicked wire of various sizes and colors that meet this criteria. Okay, let's get started. Repeat after me. Fuses protect wires. Again, for the people in the back, fuses protect wires. It's a common misconception that a fuse should protect the device that the circuit powers, and that's completely incorrect. Fuses protect the wires that are between the load and the battery. Now, if a wire was to rub through on a sharp edge and come in contact with the bare metal of a van, all of the current that a battery can possibly produce will attempt to go through the wire to the point of the short, and there's a 100% chance that the amps that will be trying to flow through the wire will be significantly higher than the wire can handle. Now with a properly sized fuse, the fuse will blow and power will be cut to the damaged wire before a fire can start, ideally. Now, getting on with it. ABYC, the American Boat and Yacht Council. Standard E-9.11 states that each fuse or trip-free circuit breaker shall be rated in accordance with ABYC E-911, A and B and shall also not exceed 100%, 150% of the conductor opacity in table one. So we already know that our load is going to be less than the maximum opacity of the wire. And according to the E911, we also know that our fuse size just needs to be less than 150% of the maximum opacity of that wire. Now it doesn't state though how much greater than the load the fuse should be, but in all reality, it shouldn't say that because the fuse protects the wire but you do want the fuse to be big enough to not have nuisance trips if the load happens to surge a bit. And maybe if you're thinking critically at this point, you may think that we could always just fuse at 150% of the max wire capacity. But what I personally don't like about doing that is if we have a longer wire run. So here's an example. Let's say we have a 15 amp load that's 25 feet away from the source and we want to have a max of 3% voltage drop. To meet that voltage drop requirement, we would need four gauge wire. Four gauge wire has a maximum allowable ampacity of 160 amps. 150% of 160 amps is 240 amps. Now, I don't know about you, but I would feel funny protecting a 15 amp load with a 240 amp fuse. It just makes me cringe a little bit, maybe for no good reason at all, but here we are. So what I've personally found to work the best, and perhaps it's hidden in a book of code somewhere and I can't find it, but I like to take 150% of the amps required from the load and then verify that that number is under 150% of the max amperage rating of the wire. So in the case of the previous example, 15 times 150% equals a 22 and a half amp fuse. Now we can't really find a 22 and a half amp fuse very easily. So I'm a big fan of just rounding down to the next available fuse size. So in this case, a 20 amp fuse. Now 20 amp is well under the 150% of the max opacity of four gauge wire of 240 amps. So we're good to go. And also 20 amps is, is high enough above 15 amps of the load. So yeah, yeah, we're good to go. Now this calculator I made, you can follow along if you like, the link is in the description. The calculator does the exact same thing that I just described and all you have to do is input two different inputs. You input the amps of the load and select the wire gauge from the drop down menu. Then check the top of the page for the recommended view size. You'll also get an error if the amps are too big for the requested wire size. Also, remember that this fuse size recommendation function is also available on the wire sizing calculator. And I actually think this will likely be more helpful than the standalone fuse size calculator in most cases. But now you've got options for whichever one you need. Now, before we finish up, 
I just wanted to give a quick heads up that I've opened up options for personalized support to help you design electrical systems in your camper van or RV. I've got a private group where I answer questions in much greater detail and in a more timely manner than I can possibly manage in all of my public social media accounts or emails. I'm currently offering the private support group, custom wiring diagrams, as well as one-on-one -on -one consulting calls. Now, if you don't need personalized support or you don't want to pay for the info, that's totally fine. I still have all kinds of free information about designing solar and electrical setups for RVs and camper vans, and you can browse all of that information in the description below. So that's all there is to this video, and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who could also benefit from it. If you have any questions about this process, leave me a question in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next video.